Uh, so I'm Jenny Wise. As I mentioned, I'm a senior analyst at Forrester Research, uh, where I cover mobile marketing, advertising, and customer engagement strategies. And so what that means is that I spend a lot of time looking at consumer behavior, how they are adopting new technologies, using these devices, engaging with each other and with brands, uh, and also the technology landscape that's going to enable brands and companies to engage with their customers. And so today, what I'm going to talk about is personalization, which is something that I am fielding questions on about every day from companies. It is probably one of the most hyped words <laughs> and terms that we're hearing today across organizations. Uh, but we see that some of the applications aren't quite meeting those customer expectations. So in this session, we're going to take uh, a little departure from what I did last year, which is focusing on the marketing technology stack that's supporting these mobile moments, to focus on the user experience and customer experience that you need to create that will be successful. So the agenda, packed agenda for 15 minutes. I am taking this as a personal career challenge. Uh, first, I'm going to start by discussing personalization. What is all of this hype? What is the reality of applications today? Then we'll talk about the mind shift that companies need to go through to create really successful personalization efforts. And then we'll talk about this strategy quickly to give you a framework to walk away with from this so that you can start applying it to your efforts tomorrow. Not on the weekend, once you're back. So personalization. Why are we talking about this? I'm talking about this because Google sends me proactive alerts to let me know that it's time to go to, to a restaurant reservation that they've learned from my email. Because Lyft knows where I am, it knows frequent places I go to, it has all my credit card information saved, so getting from A to B is so easy. Because Netflix has become your TV buddy today. Right? It gives you recommendations. Sometimes it's a little nudgy, and it makes sure I'm still watching <laughs> when I've gone down that rabbit hole. And we also have the likes of the Echo. Right? So if I want to find a recipe, I don't have to mine through books and find one that meets my profile. Because if I want a margarita, for example, I can fire out the Patron skill. I can say, I want a margarita that is, or just anything with tequila that's going to be a little spicy, maybe sweet, and I have a lime in my fridge, so what can I do? And it will send me some curated cocktail recommendations. Right, so when we're looking at experiences like this, we see that they have changed the way that people do the most basic of tasks, right? and they're also altering entire industries. And the common thread here isn't just because they were digital first or disruptors or new products. It's because they are using personalization to make things easier. Right? They're not just looking at their audience as one whole. Right? You can't compare apples to oranges. They are differentiating between their users to customize experiences to make things simpler, easier, and more enjoyable. And so this means that for other companies, the pressure is on. Not just because you have these competitors that might disrupt your industry, but also because your customer expectations are shifting. Every good experience that they have from any company, they're going to transfer that expectation onto all companies. And so we saw that this happened just from mobile coming into existence as an engagement platform. So before mobile, desktop engagement, the who, what, when, where, and why of marketing was one way. Right? You reached a segment with a pre-planned message through a pre-planned channel, and you sent it when you, the company, wanted the customer to know something. With mobile, that personal device with them everywhere that they go, with all this data that's now available, meant that you had to reach an individual at a time in a channel that was right for them with a personalized message. And now we have even more technologies and ecosystems that are getting your customer attention. We have chatbots. So now your customers are beginning to expect conversational personalized experiences. Right? We have intelligent agents, Siri, Google Assistant, Alexa, who are becoming so plugged into the customer's digital selves right, that they can begin to predict what they're going to do and act on their behalf in the digital realm. So the good news is that this pressure on personalization can be effective. We know that personalization can work. For example, Netflix has grown to represent 30% of home entertainment revenue in just about 10 years. 
Rue La La began to send real-time personalized uh, messages, and they saw a 15% increase in key metrics. And your customer even says it's effective. So this is our consumer data. We have thought that 62% of US online adults say that they've chosen, recommended, or paid more for a brand that provides a personalized service or experience. And that's just today, right? We can see that this is just going to be the tipping point. Almost two thirds of your audience is already wanting and acting on these personalized experiences. So as a result, we see that companies are jumping to organize or jumping to personalize. Uh, among those that we um, survey, customer digital experience professionals, 68% say that delivering a personalized experience is a priority. So why don't we all just personalize, right? This sounds great, you get really great results. So I've decided to personalize in some of the common ways that we see today, and let's see how they work. These are gonna be some messages and promotions for you guys. So what have we done here? <laughs> so this first one, are you interested in mobile and marketing technology? Well, I've guessed yes, because you're at this conference, and so I'm suggesting this session, but you're already in this session, right? So I've thought of you as a segment with some preference that I've known, but I've completely missed context. Also, I've used your location to say, hey, you're near the zoo, here's the direction, let's start some foot traffic. That one piece of data isn't enough for relevancy. Right, you are at a conference, and hey, that's actually four miles away, so it's not like you're gonna just hop over there. And then, hi, Mike. This presentation was personalized just for you, and you know that because your name is in it, right? So how does that work? Either your name's not Mike, so like, hey, that was a misfire. Your name is Mike, and you've realized that this is kind of a ploy, not actually personalized for you, uh, or you're also wondering, that's creepy. How did you figure out my name? I didn't give it to you. <laughs> so I've either not gone far enough to provide relevancy or I've gone too far and there's that creepy factor. And so this is where we're seeing that personalization is not being as effective as it could be today and your customers are on to you. Here's a shower thought, uh, which is a Reddit post where someone posted a targeted ad to have a button for already bought it and it was voted down because it's unoriginal. So many people have this complaint. So how do we fix this? Well, we fix this not by starting with, okay, we want to drive a click, or hey, technology's gonna let us dynamically insert a name, so let's do it and call it personalization, right? We can't just check the box. We have to actually create a mind shift in the way that we think about it. And to do that, we have to put the person back into personalization. So what do we mean when we say personalization? A personalized experience. This is our definition. It's one that uses customer data and understanding to frame, guide, extend, and enhance interactions based on a person's history, preferences, context, and intent. So you can see here we're using a lot of data, and not just one data point. We're also learning about their context and their intent, and we are using it to help the user. I'll illustrate what that looks like. So this is where we are today. So we are the companies on this island saying, hey, customer, I want this from you. I want this click. But then we have the customer on the other side of that mobile device who's saying, you know, company, I'm actually here because I'm trying to do something else. Right? I want to buy a couch. I'm trying to plan a barbecue. I'm trying to do whatever it is. So what we have to do is make this shift to put our efforts through that personalization lens. That means shifting from thinking of the short-term metrics that you want to accomplish to trying to make sure that you have signaled one of these four intents to help your customer. And these do not have to be mutually exclusive, and I'll illustrate them right after this. So first you have to say, I have information to help you. I can simplify things for you. I think you might need this, and I care about you. And these are the four that we landed on after <laughs> analyzing many different companies and many different efforts. So what do these mean? I have information to help you. How can you use data about the customer to bring the relevant facts forward so that they feel ready to act, to make an informed decision, whether that is to see an ad and want to learn more about your company or to purchase something? So here we have an example of two personalized videos. And this one of them is for Atlantis. And so when someone signs up for an Atlantis resort vacation, they send them a personalized video uh, right when they book, two weeks out and one weeks out. 
And what they do is they provide a video that says, hey, Jennifer, you're taking a trip. Here are the details of your trip. This is what you signed up to do on the resort. And hey, here are some other things that you could also do. And the whole video is customized. That is, if it's a family vacation, it's family. If it's a couple vacation, it's couples. And what that does is that provides the person with the context of what they're already doing and putting them in the mindset that they're ready to act and make the decision for that upsell opportunity. And we saw that it worked. Total spend increased 9%, and net promoter score increased by 12. So it also said, I care for you, right? Let us help you with your vacation. I can simplify things for you. So how can you take what you know about the customer and what they're trying to do and help shortcut them to it? So here we have an example of North Face. Uh, who has an IBM Watson integration. So instead of going to their site and having to navigate through the categories they've come up to on their information architecture, I can, through natural language, just say some of the features I want in my jacket, and they'll send me all the jackets that meet that criteria. And the result is that when people tried this, they spent more time on the site, there were more successful conversions, and 75% of customers liked it. They said that they would use the tool again. I think you might need this. So this is key because a lot of times people might not know what they want, or we might want them to engage more, right, or have that upsell opportunity or cross-sell opportunity, so how can we get things in front of them? So here we have Birchbox, which sends customized packages to someone's home based on the preferences that they've stated, uh, but sometimes they'll say, you know, people said that they're classic, but they might go for the shocking product. So they'll send the bright blue eyeshadow to the person who says that they have brown eyes, and that person might go for it. But they don't just do that haphazardly. They also send an email saying, we sent you this product because blue eyeshadow can complement brown eyes. So even if they don't go for it, they know it was still personalized to help them. On the other side, we have IM, which is a photo editing app. And they realized a lot of people weren't coming back to their app after downloading it. So they use analytics to understand the journey that people go through the app, what they have to engage with, the tools they need to use to really become an active user, and then push notifications based on that. And they saw that app retention increase by 67.3%. And then finally, there's I care about you. Right? Google cares and makes sure I don't want to, I'm not late to my appointment. We have Lark, a fitness app, which is essentially your digital nurse uh, or wellness coach. And they send you little bits of information about your exercise and how you're doing with your food throughout the day in a conversational manner. And people love it. It has a 4.5 app star rating, and it has positive comments saying the Lark app makes me feel good about myself. Right? It provides this value above and beyond. So how do you execute on this? Right? This can sound lofty. This can sound like something not all companies can do. And we also know that it's hard to get started. So we asked companies, right, those ones who are undergoing personalization uh, campaigns and projects, what are some of your greatest hurdles? And they are essentially everything, right? From not having the right technology to not understanding the business metrics to customer privacy to where to get started to what does it even mean. We also see that they're therefore applying it in pretty limited ways. Right, so it's starting with content on the website and promotions, right, which probably aren't going to result in that great experience that we just gave some examples of. And only 30% are actually personalizing content within the app, which is one of the most personal touch points that you have. Data is underutilized. We can see, again, it's more skewing towards that traditional segmentation type of data as opposed to real time. And the analytical approaches that they're using are also primarily static, right? So again, we're not going to get that real-time interaction where you know that user in that moment and their intent. But we are beginning to see a little bit more of that adoption. And this is because the, the moments are happening with the customer, right? So we set the strategy for the customer first, but then you have all the hard work, <laughs> which is who do you get involved internally? Who do you work with as a company in order to execute this? And to do that, we suggest this framework. This is called the idea cycle. And what it does is it gives you a stepped approach that starts with the customer to make sure that your strategy is set, and then you back into that strategy with the necessary technology and components that you need to deliver. So to quickly see what this looks like, the first step is identifying the key moments to personalize. 
Again, this isn't just, well, we have your name. Let's put it in an email. Um, and you can't assume that you know the customer. You're going to have to do some work. I love this <laughs> commercial here. Attention, passenger Kramer. You've deviated from our travel sales funnel. Please return to your journey. Right? That's not how your customer works. So how do you know the customer journey? And then once you do, how can you provide one or more of those four personalization effects? Right? Where is the most need? Is there frustration? Is there an opportunity to shortcut or to present them with the data that you have in a helpful way? Then there's design. So this is where you pick what is the right channel, what is the right message, what is that right content in that moment. Then you move to engineer. This is the technology. This is a lot of really hard work that you have to do. And there is an entire personalization toolkit. And so we won't go through all these assets today, but this is a framework to make sure that you have all the bases covered, right? And also to make sure that you have the right people in the room to make these decisions. So do we have the customer data? How, if we don't, how do we get that data? Do we ask the customer? Or can we put in analytics? Is there third-party data that we could use to augment? Do we have the content that we need to deliver? Is that some work that has to be done? What does our personalization engine look like? So right, what do our marketing technology providers offer? How automated and dynamic? And then do we have the right analytics and the right in-house tools and training to be able to execute? And then finally, you move to analyze. Right? So do you have the analytics in place to see if it worked? Right? Did you identify a journey and you send a personalized notification and they came back into the app? And was that as optimized as it could be? Right? This is a continuous cycle. So these are our steps. As you mentioned, with apples and oranges, right? everyone is different, and you have to differentiate and make sure that you come up with that perfect blend for that individual. And that starts with this three-step process that we went through in a rapid fire, 15 minutes. First, you launch a person-first personalization effort. Right? So make sure that your effort signals something of value and help to the user and that you have reached them and intercepted them at a time where you're using this to help and engage. And then, in effect, that will back into your metrics. Then you'll have to orchestrate the new insights and content capabilities, so looking at that uh, personalization practitioner toolkit that you need to execute. And you're going to task yourself internally and your partners to see how they can execute with speed and agility. So these are the steps for the personalization of, uh, experience and how to make sure that you aren't just checking the box. And with that, I hope that was helpful. I hope that provides a framework through which to think about these efforts, because the most technology and analytical and data-backed uh, effort that is not remotely relevant to the user will not end up driving the most success for your company. So hopefully this gave you a guide forward, and thank you for your time. <laughs>